So if ablation actually turns the clock back to an earlier stage, almost like a forest fire where you're making it smaller, and the question is whether you can get it all the way to zero or not, then some people would wonder, well, why would anybody not do an ablation over the other methods of treatment, such as um, rate controlling medication that just slows the AFib down and makes it more tolerable, but doesn't actually get rid of it, or a, an antiarrhythmic medication that suppresses the AFib and keeps it asleep, but also doesn't get, actually get rid of the AFib cells. Even if somebody went to somebody who's not that skilled and doesn't get rid of that much AFib in a more advanced case, like a persistent or long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation, where more is necessary and where the skill of the physician doing the procedure makes a whole lot more difference, like putting out a forest fire and the different skills between forest rangers. If even if somebody goes to somebody who's not that skilled or doesn't do complex ablations, some people ask, well, isn't that still better? Because you are still turning the clock back. You are making the, the person have less AFib cells. So wouldn't that still be better than a medication that doesn't do that or that just masks the atrial fibrillation cells instead of getting rid of them? Yes, the answer to that would be yes, except for the fact that it's a procedure and all procedures have risk. If the atrial fibrillation ablation, if the atrial fibrillation procedure had no risks or minimal risks, then yes, do it on everybody. Whether you get rid of a lot of it or just a little bit, it doesn't really matter. But because it does have risks, the risks of the procedure have to be weighed with the potential benefits you're hoping to get out of it. And the risks of the procedure, while low, are not zero. Usually for an otherwise healthy patient uh, who's under the age of 80, the risks include a small 1% chance of clots and uh, a small 1% chance of stroke or uh, damage to structures in the heart, such as the esophagus or certain other vessels uh, and nerves, or making a hole in the heart with potentially dangerous bleeding. That is always a potential risk because the wall thickness of the patient's heart does vary, and especially in complex ablations where one is uh, cauterizing on multiple walls of the heart, some walls are thicker and some walls are thinner, and so there is always a small risk of making a hole in the heart with potentially dangerous bleeding. That's why this kind of procedure cannot be done at a small hospital that doesn't have cardiothoracic surgeons around doing their own procedures in case of a surgical emergency. But usually for most people, the overall risk of the procedure is one to 2% or less. However, when one does get into their 80s and 90s, the risk of all procedures, including the risk of general anesthesia, which this procedure is done under, do go up. 